you can take away my freedom, but you can never take away my car. We saw Fast 10, so you know what that means. Get made live for Fast 10, a movie that is just the beginning of the end. A movie that Vin Diesel compared to the Lord of the Rings. He did it in seriousness. A movie in which the bad guy is mad at the wrong guy. You forget for the entire movie that he didn't kill his dad. Someone else killed his dad. Why is he going after him first? But we don't care. There are 45 people in this movie. If you've never seen a Fast and Furious, guess what? It doesn't make a difference. You'll figure it out. And if you don't, they're just fun characters. So tonight, to break down this movie, to look at it from every different angle, because I can't really break down the plot more than just saying this. You have to know a little bit of Fast Five, but if you don't see Fast Five, that's okay, because the first 20 minutes of this movie are Fast Five, so that's okay. And then everything else happens. In a world in which everyone speaks English, Everyone's able to travel around the world within minutes. This movie makes so much sense, but I will never attempt to break down the plot more than Jason Momoa is mad. <laughs> but we're going to break it all down tonight, and I'm going to do it with my co-hosts. Now, let me tell you something about my co-hosts. They're excited to be here, and I want to welcome them out to the stage. So please welcome to the stage my co-host... Jason Manzuka! What's up, jerks? What's up, family? Family, 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 family. All right, buckle up, assholes. This show's gonna be conservatively three and a half hours long. We cannot shut up in the back. We Can't had to stop, stop multiple text chains. Here's the thing. We've had, to, we've had people unsubscribe from the text chains because we're talking too much about the movie. I told Jason, I saw this movie alone in a theater in the middle of Ohio, an IMAX theater. I yelled at the screen, I got up, I changed seats. It was the best movie experience I've ever had in my entire life. You and I saw it first, right? You, saw, you and I saw it first. We, oh, knew, yeah. yes. we knew the fun. Uh, uh, we knew what was up. We knew. You've seen it twice. Yes, I have seen, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. In the last three and a half years, I've been in a movie theater three times. <laughs> Two of them were Fast X, baby. And I wouldn't have it any other way. I'll go again. Now I will say that this week was a sad week because normally I would accompany our next host to a theater to see this film. Oh, people are like too invested. But oh, sadly, they have to go separate? 
Some of us have to go alone. <laughs> but I will tell you this. I didn't mind the thought of you going alone, but I did love the thought <laughs> of my co-host going alone at 11 a.m. with a cup of coffee in her hand. <laughs> I just love leaving the house. Where are you going? The theater to see Fast 10, 10 a.m.? I'll be done by 12.30. <laughs> And now... Life changed by noon. I'll play it one more time. To Dan Rivio! Okay. Hi, Paul. Hi, June. How are you? I'm well. How are you? Very good. Um, you saw the movie <sighs> yes. in the AM. When, when the time still says AM on the clock, you were in a seat. I was. And I, 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 I told the text chain we were on that I was going with I had a coffee in hand. There were no early showings of this movie. This was the earliest I could go. And I thought, well, I'm going to get some work done in there. I'll watch, but I'll be doing some emails. Work done? Yeah, I'll be doing what some work emails. did you think you'd get done? <laughs> I would love it if you did a, like a self tape with Fast X in I, the background. You know, I had this book to jot down notes, but then I had another book to just because I thought I'm going to go through some to do lists. I'm going to get some bullet journaling some bullet done. Journaling. I truly was like, I'm going to get a lot. Of, I'm going to get a lot of admin done during this movie. Some life admin. I was riveted to the screen. Yes. I couldn't take my eyeballs off what was happening. At one point, I will tell you, I had to get up and dance. Yes. I, That's what I I'm talking about. Get... This movie gets you out of the seat. The yeah. movie demands it. Now, we have two guests tonight. One has joined us to talk about Fast and Furious in the past. The other is a How Did This Get Made All-Star. Been here before, talked about a great film, but came to this fully prepared, watched all the films, oh, wow. and Hobbs and Shaw. Yeah. I know that. To be ready for tonight. So he will have the most information because I can't even remember what I just saw. So to know the full 11, 11, 11 <laughs> movies. Over the course of 22 years. With the, roughly the same cast. This is a feat. So ladies and gentlemen, you know this person as a director, as a producer. He is from our Deep Blue Sea episode. Here we go. Evan Goldberg! Hello! Evan, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Too many sleeves! I know. I told you already, this is my favorite shirt, and I'm not cutting the fucking <laughs> sleeves off. You offered we to were, wear anybody who had an extra shirt, you would cut off those if sleeves. You get, yeah. If someone will give me a you sleeveless shirt, did, I will gladly put it on right now. You also generously offered to come out shirtless wearing everyone else's sleeves. <laughs> and, and the offer stands, my friend. <laughs> but Evan, um, welcome back. The last time we saw you, we talked about Deep Blue Sea, a movie that really, if you look at the both of them, they both are... In a heightened world, right? I mean, <laughs> like, I would believe that there's a shark in this movie if you told me there was a shark in this movie. I, I, I feel very it. comfortable saying Deep Blue Sea is far less heightened than this film. <laughs> yeah, I guess you're right. I will say that the director of this movie said that what he brings to the franchise is uh, grounding. <laughs> Thank God. Multiple times when interviewed about this film, he says, Justin Lin, let it get too far out there. I wanted to ground it in reality. So, a mission accomplished. Uh, well, but in the past, like, we've seen them f drive cars out of, hello, uh, out of airplanes, rather, into space. This one had the very grounded element of driving down a dam. <laughs> to be honest, so I have to say, though, Jason, I, at points I did think, oh, the physics of this film make more sense to I, me. I, I, and they did. I, I felt I they have were, to agree. They made more sense. I, do you remember when Vin used a car to smash two helicopters together? I as do. Though they were like, and I still think I think that might disagree with your theory. <laughs> once again, comparison to the others. Once again, cars are the hands of these movies. 
Yeah. They are used to grab, save, catch, throw, swing, anything you can do with a hand and an arm, and that's the car. Yeah, fuck it. Think anything. about it. I mean, jack off. Anything. What do you think the Nas Anyone, anyone who can change their own oil can also bring down the helicopters with grappling hooks. It's fine. He, he's, a, he's a car guy. He knows what they do. And um, this is actually the first movie with electric cars. That's a big, uh, a big thing in this movie. Which, I, don't oh. know, I don't know when they ever drove one, but it's in a lot of the press materials oh. that electric they cars, but they're never it? highlighted if they are. Do you mean the actors were just driven in vans to set that were electric? <laughs> Yeah, I did I don't, not see an electric car in this I movie. I didn't either. I, I, I'm sure they're in there, but they make a big deal. Like, I'm sure well, we one got of these electric cars. No, the cannon car that John Cena had. That was electric. <laughs> oh, I bet that's it. Yes. <laughs> Every rocket was electric and very carbon neutral. <laughs> uh, but quickly, what, what's your takeaway? You've watched them all recently. You've seen all 11 recently. What do you fall, where do you fall in this franchise? Like, any just... Overview thoughts. I mean, I feel like you guys might disagree, but this is where it went fucking insane. This movie. This, yeah. one. this is the movie where it went to fucking like madness level. Wait, so it was everything like teetering before on this. insanity the whole time, oh, and wow. this has like gone over the edge into like the depths of madness. I, I'm not gonna talk about it now because I would like to talk about it when we have everybody out here. But there's a scene with Momoa where I was like, oh, now we've passed reality. And for me to even have that thought in this movie, that really went far. Like it, it goes really far. So anyway. We w- <laughs> this movie may have been the one that broke it. Maybe we're going to get even more in the next two. But you know what? Let's talk about this one tonight with our final guest of the night. He was here for Fast and Furious. You know him as a How Did This Get Made all-star. He also has his introduction right here. Here we go. Let's get it out. Here we are. Seth Rogen! <laughs> Yes! <laughs> wow. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome, Fast Family. Seth, it was only a few weeks ago in which yeah. we saw Fast 1, and I'm so glad that we saw Fast 1, to then look at Fast 10 because it's wild, oh, yeah. the differences. Like, it's in- come a long way. <laughs> <laughs> It really has. Like, they were drag racers, and they are now superheroes, yeah. really. Um, I think they're immortal. Yeah, oh, for yeah. sure. I mean, they're running a spy shop from their house. Like, they, like, they are fully giving out missions. We, need, we have to talk about the fact that he just lives at his house for an hour. That, wait, but, but, like, did I miss something? Like, they're looking for him. Yeah. He's at home. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> he never leaves home. He, he only leaves home for a couple days yeah. every few years. I don't. <laughs> and, the, and what we have to assume is that Momoa's been there the whole time. For the last 10 years, Momoa's been just like watching everything. And he's like seeing the house blow up, be rebuilt, yes. reconstructed, <laughs> repopulated. <laughs> That is the thing he that is He knew the contractor unclear. they yeah. had. He uh, saw Everything. the floorboards getting installed. <laughs> He's like, it's good they're putting a sauna in. They need it. <laughs> and he, I like again, how they're doing everything the same, just like last time. And Charlize shows up, and he's like, they're coming for you. Yeah. And he's like, I'm at home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like neutral ground. It's like an embassy. He lives in the... En- the that's the Fast and Furious embassy where everything God, else is. circles around. But Which it is, is a- Echo Park. <laughs> Well, let's but be what clear. I love, he, what they I, live in Echo Park. What I love, though, about it is from the first movie, you know, clearly it's had a house in Echo Park. They didn't think this was going to be going around for 20 and years. And don't forget their sandwich shop. Where's oh. the sandwich shop? Where's the cafe? Where's the tuna sandwich? We yeah. need it. Somebody hypothesized that that was just a cover for the uh, DVD VCR sales. Oh, yeah. but, but I don't think so because... I don't think that you could write off that many sandwiches. Uh, that, would, yeah, that, that would be a hard way to launder money. We, yeah, we sold 4,000 sandwiches this month. Uh, <laughs> well, but, at one point in the movie, we do get into how much money they have. Oh, right. Oh, yes. Money's a big plot yeah. line in the movie. It is, and I was so fascinated by that. I'm like, okay, so they've been making money per job, yeah, mis- I guess. Assignment. Right, but we've had no sense of like, 
any real upward mobility. There's stations in life also, see, which is wonderful. He lives in the same house. Yes. He lives in the same house. Well, he's house. able to re, like, redo it to its exact specifications every time. That's like, that's really rich shit. It's like, make it again, but don't change a goddamn thing. <laughs> I want the exact floorboard. I want the tiny bedroom. The same cobwebs <laughs> in the garage on the window. Well, this is, this is what I was thinking of, that when they first shot that movie, their next door neighbor, it's just a side view, but it's fully caged in. Like, shit's gone down, and the neighbor's like, I'm putting a cage here because yeah. I don't want anyone in my backyard. Now, first of all, if you live next to them, I think you're very safe. But I love that I that disagree. <laughs> I disagree. If you live next door to the Toretto's, you're fucked. There's so much heat on that. That house has exploded at least once. <laughs> I think they backed themselves into a corner by having Paul Walker's character still be alive but being completely absent. But the audience knows he has passed. So we look at him with reverence like, you have passed. Yeah. But then we also treat him like a deadbeat dad because that opening family picnic, his wife is there. Yeah. And he's not. And his son is not. Right. Yeah. Wait, I'm sorry. Oh, I think they Wait. Have two kids. I, yeah. Whose it's, child? Uh, you're going to ask who. Whose He's child? Little is B. Little B. Yes. Okay, who right. do you think are Little B's parents? I thought that Little B's dad is Vin Diesel? Yes. yes. Okay. And then Michelle Rodriguez is Little B's mom. No. no. What? <laughs> it's happening! <laughs> All of our dreams have come true! Who's Little B's mom? So, okay. It's obviously Elena. 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 Oh, uh, uh, um, the the the, uh, the woman who was killed by Charlize on the plane in the in well, the how about this? You can eight. say the daughter. She was the Rock's right hand woman in five. Does the yes. daughter. None but of June, this is the daughter. Daughter. Brazilian she cop. Was, oh, the you Brazilian? and her were roommates for two I, summers remember? in New York. Nothing, nothing. Okay, remember when Vin Diesel goes no, to Brazil I don't remember. in this movie? I don't remember. In, well, this, no, in movie, this movie, he goes to Brazil and yes. he races against a young Brazilian yes, racer. Yes, and actually, at one point, I thought. Is he her dad? No. Or he, by the way, legitimate question. Or does Legit he want to fuck her? He's like, I was her like, both. The also answer both. Is both. Yeah, like, doing She's that dance. She's her uncle. No. That's his, uh, she, he's her That's uncle. Re there, and there's an incredible What's line. What's removed? Little B is Paul Walker's line, uncle. There's an incredible line in the movie where she says, you go save your son, period, my nephew. <laughs> she, they have to explain they have to, there's no subtext. There is just text in this movie of let me tell you. So she is the sister of, of the dead mother. That's, El that's Little B's mom? That's yes. Little B's mom. Now, Little B, Little B. Now that does open a lot of questions. <laughs> Opens yeah, up wait. a lot now, of questions. Now, by the way, questions. here's what I'll bring up about Little B that's also <laughs> wait, problematic. Brian, wait, so... That's Elena Neves and Dom Toretto made Little B. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and Isabel is, okay, Elena's sister. Yes. I love it. But, but there now, is definitely what? chemistry. And I Letty like, is okay, right? Letty kind of, like, well, Elena well, stepped little away B when calls, Letty's amnesia went away. Let, right. Little B calls Letty mom. Yes. Right. Because... The baby was just a baby when Shaw saved the baby with on Shaw. Charlie's. With Shaw, dude. Oh, yeah. Oh, Shaw, Shaw. <laughs> Statham. Sorry. Statham. Sorry. That little B is the baby that Statham put headphones on and I jumped out of an baby. airplane. Now, but wait. That's I mean, but little B? That's, that's little, little B. B. Yes. That's little B. This is why we're here. Now. We're doing the work. Wait a second. Genuine This question. is why I went twice. <laughs> now, to bring it all the way back, to bring it all the way back, I'll say this. Why is Little B interesting? Well, he's named Brian after That's why I thought it was Paul Brian. Walker. Right. Huh. Why would you name your son after your best friend who's still alive? Alive. And That's... not the son's mother who at is this, dead. Yes, yeah. At this point, at this point in time, Brian, Paul Walker's character, is a dick. Yeah. For not yes. coming and helping ever. 
like by keeping him alive, they are now creating a situation where he seems like he doesn't care about any of them. And, right. by the way, and his wife, whose main move is hitting people with a frying pan, yes. goes deep into the action while he's just out and he's the best fighter in the whole thing. Oh, yeah. Well, it's like Brian has an unnamed daughter. That is true. They have two kids. One is just daughter. And the other one <laughs> Named is after Jack. the Pearl Jam song. <laughs> <laughs> and the other one is Jack. But it seems like he has just wimped out, or because it's like they're all fighting these wow. missions. That is slander against that. Did they kid. show Jack. Never, no, he, no. Never, so Jack is yet. To we be only no see. Actor plays we Jack. only see Mia as the auntie yeah. to little B. We never see her as the as mom the mother to her own, to her children. own children. And sadly, okay. she's like, I have to go to Brian and the kids. And Cena's like, okay, you go to them. And she's like, okay, gotta go. I gotta go be with them. And then she goes away in the movie because they're not there. They're not there. There are, there are what, no people to go to. And so Finn she, goes, me, is, me and Brian are safe yeah. at one point. Yeah. Right. That's, right. A, that's yeah, that the was only line yeah. to just say, hey, but yet, we have this moment where he stares at pictures of people who are dead, yeah. including his father, and we, the audience, are like, yeah. But he's not dead, but he is dead. But well, he we is also, dead, they but also not in the play movie. an instrumental. That's weird. They also put the music yes. in that is the, the song that was the end of. The Wiz Khalifa song. The Wiz yes. Khalifa song yeah. that's the end of episode yeah. the, number seven, right? Just so you know, if you're trying to clear that song for a joke, they won't do it. <laughs> <laughs> and if I you're at all love... confused in the movie, don't worry. There is two to three previous Leons. In the movie. Well. Reacher does one that's very long. I was, I loved Reacher. <laughs> the whole movie is really like, it is just a playground for enormous men to get together. Yes. And be together in community with each other. It, you're absolutely right. <laughs> in it affinity is. with, yes. It's, and, 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 and what's amazing is that all of these gigantic men have gotten together <laughs> in one single movie to traumatically destroy the life of a child so profoundly, turning him into... Some, when, when Letty goes, we have an unwanted visitor, you know what to do. And Little B has to be like, okay, okay. Little B, we are watching Little B be so traumatized, this kid will never feel safe anywhere ever again. He, little B! We watch Little B kill murder people. people for the first time and high five his uncle. Yeah. This, we are giving birth to a, this, if they're not making a Patrick Bateman style psycho killer with Little B later, I, I don't know what's like up. The training of Little B for one of his big moments at the end was really flawed. Like, there's a whole sequence in the beginning oh, where yeah. Little B. Vin tells him to just like feel the car and feel the rhythms of the car. Follow the line. Follow, yeah, feel the car. Yeah. yeah, but then what he's required to do at the end of the movie, that skill set has nothing to no. do. No, nope. nope. he's, he's, he's required to leap, Stop. fling his tiny little body <laughs> and, find, and find the line of the other car. <laughs> the, it, Is that not the driving lesson? Surprise turns out to be a flying lesson. Yeah, like that is that's the twist of the movie. Like, he was never teaching him how to drive. He was teaching him how to well, fly. Well, okay, so I was, early on, I got really excited. And I do think this movie, there are some improvements. There, because when Rita Moreno, there I just, are. I just, if we you have don't not mind, even started talking about the yeah. movie. <laughs> I, I want to just There's, say, the line was, find the line, feel the car, and let it ride. That's which, what he says to you his told son. me that, and then told me to jump, I would say, I don't understand that how that works. And, and then, when do when, I jump? And then what, when little, what's the line? What line? And when Little B says, you're not afraid of anything, Vin Diesel does not refute that. No, he's like, you're right. He lets you're his right. son believe that. <laughs> There was, a, the other, there was a few great lines in the movie that me and Evan were marveling over. The, fir, the best line in the movie... Game recognizes game. <laughs> if you're not using that in your day-to-day -day life, you're fucking up. Yeah. You need to be using that as much as possible. Michelle Rodriguez says that like with I don't like with so little iron. Like I've never said anything with that little irony. Like it is there, it is so pure. Like I'm gonna say that to you when we're writing from now yeah. on. Game recognizes <laughs> game. Good joke, Seth. Game, game recognizes. recognizes game. Well they 
And as then, game, I recognize your game. <laughs> and it's still, to me, unclear why they have such an adversarial relationship, which is like Letty and Charlize. Oh, it makes no sense. It makes no sense. Well, it's like, she, no, killed, cause, cause she, she killed, killed Le- she, she killed her Elena. husband's ex-wife. <laughs> she killed Little B's mom. One of the Wait. only deaths that I believe will never be undone. Okay. <laughs> Are you crazy? <laughs> Are you out of your mind? That would be amazing. Everyone's coming. I Every mortal so. joke was no joke. John well, Cena has to come back. Well, John I Cena's coming back. Oh, he's nice. coming back. Because I hope he does. So the good. power of God. Like Christ is going because he grabbed that <laughs> cross. Say, yeah, as like, Jewish people, I got we got real weird throughout this day <laughs> at a few times. Yeah. Vin Diesel is on a Christ-like journey well, in this. Like, this is I'm the beginning okay with of a Christian trilogy. subtext. Yes. Don't get me wrong. Don't fucking wave well, a cross in I, my I, face. I hope, I, I hope you like Resurrection because that's a nonstop oh, that's theme. Good. That's going to be keep, keep coming. coming back. There I was mean, so much like a cross. Letty <laughs> gets crucified by a cross, right? Because oh, yeah. uh, Brie Larson stabs her through. Like the, she, she stabs her through. Well, the and cross. the whole thing is all about Ooh, which happens. In deep blue sea, Ooh. same Whoa. thing. See, I like this. They stab a shark with a cross. Both religious God allegories. <laughs> and that's how it's a little bit more grounded. Speaking of great lines, I feel like the oh, other line I just want to say one good line that I love that I keep on thinking about is Ramsey, who originally oh yeah, is, oh, yeah. oh this is an incredible. I wrote this line. Ramsey, who is just like a, a hacker and kind of shy, it. she just says. Yeah, I know stuff now. Yeah. She goes, she says, she says, she a, says a bunch like, of so car you know, jargon. This, yeah. A bunch in of car movie, jargon. I know stuff. Yeah. Just so you know, I got some rewrites. She goes, oh, that's, oh, that's right. I know stuff now. Well, what I like about that is like stuff like hacking the world's greatest security systems yeah. is below stuff that is engines. Yeah, right. exactly. <laughs> like about a 40 year old car. <laughs> cool. I, I think what I was shocked to figure out this late in the series is that these are faith based movies. Oh, yeah. These are truly movies that worship a God. So Only Kirk Cameron the God is going to come in at the no, end. No, <laughs> this God, this Christ is Dominic Toretto. It's not Jesus Christ. This is. Can you the believe he Dom. hasn't been crucified in a film? It's I think shocking. it's coming. Oh, he it's will. It's coming. I, I believe, and we can get into the specifics of it, but Charlize, Brie Larson, and Jason Momoa bring a lightness to this franchise that I felt like... Cena as well. Cena. Oh, and yeah, Cena... Please I'm, don't Cena, forget Cena and put some respect on his name. Cena, to is on the next level because Cena Cena's gets like, it. Cena's like, Cena gets it. I will be a fucking idiot. And he embraces it and it's He's like... He's not afraid oh. to look dumb, yes. stupid, so not cool. It's so refreshing. He takes... He's the only person that takes L's in this yes. movie. Yeah. We, we, and made, we made blockers with him and we did a butt chugging scene and... Uh, he was cool he with was it. pretty cool. But the only thing is he does like to wear shorts. And I saw him in the movie, and I was like, he got his shorts. Good for him. (laughs) (laughs) It's tough to fit that body into pants. Yeah, he's like, I got big calves, man. What do you want? (laughs) But but what's so crazy to me about Cena in this movie, because I love him in this movie, and it's like, and again, it's like a breath of fresh air, and that's how I feel about, like, that first scene with Momoa and Charlize. I'm like, oh, this is not like the tone that I'm used to, and I love it. I'm like, well, what? this is what this is what Vin doesn't understand, and I love Vin, and let me just say that clearly and loudly. But what he doesn't understand is like John Cena does look ridiculous for a lot of the movie. At his death scene, when he blew up in that car, I was devastated. Yeah. He'll like, be like, back. Uh, don't worry. I, knew I mean, how will be the upset. most... Lud- I mean, well, look, we've it already... It doesn't matter mattered. how. I mean, the, the fact that Giselle is back... I mean... Oh, in the, be- in the best reveal ever. Like, obviously, she's not there. No one's there. Like, they got her on a green screen, like, one day at her house in her backyard. And... Uh, like, we dug a hole in your yard. Will you pop out of it? <laughs> the fact... <laughs> That she pops out of that fucking submarine oh with binoculars, God. like yeah. mm, she's in, a, she's on a Zoom for sure. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is iPhone footage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I was gonna say with John Cena, what I love about John Cena is that John Cena um, is not the character that he was in the last movie. No, <laughs> not at all. Not at all. You, you know objectively. 
<laughs> he's, I mean, he's basically like Peacemaker. He's yeah. doing like oh, a funny him. character riff. Yeah. It's like the last movie is like, shut the fuck up. I'm going <laughs> to fucking kick your ass. And now he's like, I'm chill. I'm cool, dude. He's like, like I've, got mix, I've got mixtapes. I think it's like, it's like, he's like, this is what therapy does. Yeah. You go from that guy and you become this guy. <laughs> he also, like, I love one of the things is how like incongruent the wardrobe is in general throughout the movie. Like, John Cena's like in like a future vest. Like, <laughs> yes. Like going to the fucking gas going station. Going to the gas station. Being like, well, I hope no one finds us. <laughs> in like a future vest. Like, if you saw a guy in that vest, you'd be like, that man's from the future. Like, <laughs> you, would, you would just call the cops in Immediately. And then Jason Statham the whole time is in like sweats and a hoodie. And like that's his whole, and you're like, that's his outfit? Like, that's it? But he by never, the way, like, he's just in sweats and a hoodie. And like, I feel like his storyline is dangerous for children. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like there's a lot of creeps that are like, you want to go on an adventure? Get in quick. Your uncle wants me to, we're going. Like, well, he's and, and, a, yeah, there's the, something, there is, I could not help but look through the eyes of the little bee at all times in a way that was truly shattering I, for that see, child. See, I, I think the filmmakers were like, this is how you become a Toretto. <laughs> Absolutely. There is something so funny about that character is a, a the loser uncle who also like took down a house of forty dudes yeah. by himself with his no bare Mia, fist. Mia kicked some ass. Oh yeah, she does. Yeah, frying pan with, frying with pan. her patented frying pan. I, frying I, pan. I, I watched every film in the last month with my wife, whose birthday is here, and she's in the audience. Yes, <laughs> and and Mia Toretto uses a frying pan as a weapon. Eight times. You she, would think they would give her a gun by now. What she goes well, it's the same with the grappling hooks. Like, there's certain things that they do in every movie, but nobody fucking knows it. And like, like, what? do you know grappling hooks are in every Fast and Furious movie? No. <laughs> <laughs> they're in the they're in the first. I think what it is, it's if it's in the first one, they like reverse canonize it. Right. And they're like, yeah. I don't know how, but we gotta get these. People grappling are gonna hooks want in. these grappling hooks, and as you're watching it, you're like, why are they using fucking grappling hooks all the time? Because it's what they. do. Dude. They're <laughs> grappling hook oriented. It, it These is... movies are underwritten by big grappling. <laughs> I also like that. Um, like we gotta get into Momoa because I. Oh. I right. wanna. I want to. I think <laughs> we're mixed on Momoa over here. Yes, well, we can agree on one thing. Oh, he interesting. Tried real he hard. gave it his all. He gave okay. it 110. This is the thing too is that I also feel like if you watch this movie with the thought of. I'm trying to make Vin Diesel laugh in every scene. Like, that's the only goal. It's like, you got to see the off-camera Jason Momoa as the fully on-camera because it's like, let me get this guy to fucking laugh. And Vin Diesel never broke, so he's like, gotta turn it up. Gotta, gotta, now I gotta dance. I gotta, like, like I feel like it's, everything was at the... There's one point where he just danced in every shot. Yeah. <laughs> he was just, he was literally like, pirouetting through everything. And then scene. there's the scene, the scene where he's got the two corpses... That's the, the scene. scene where he's got we're, the we're, two doing, we're, we're getting into that. Oh, That's the scene. Up. I have a theory on that scene, and we were talking about it. It's like, I think they watched a cut, and we're like, he just seems like flamboyant and not, mm. and that's it. And not crazy And enough. not crazy. Yes. And they're like, we need to make him flamboyant and crazy. So he should be hanging out with corpses. <laughs> that is the scene to me that I was saying to you in the beginning. That's where the reality of this film broke. I'm like, this guy is having a moment to paint the toenails of people that he's killed oh. and serve them margaritas. And, like, and where's wait a minute. everyone else? Like, where's, like, what is And also just, know. like, on a time management level. Yes. I'd but like here's, to he, he's just in, like, some backyard somewhere. Like, What's where incredible about all of it, though, is he's talking to the two corpses and they each get reaction shots. Yes. <laughs> so the filmmakers shoot it and edit it like it's a conversation. Okay, yeah, cut to corpse that's, too. That's where this movie <laughs> He goes to the next level. It was level. like legitimately horrific. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, I do think it, my, I, my wife like was traumatized. I, I was as well. And she's like, oh Lisa no. Lisa oh, no. screamed, no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I do think you're right though that this movie is, you know, obsessed with masculinity, Christianity, all of it. And and they had this man, this this man who was playing very feminine, and so they had to make him a serial killer. Yes, like, psycho. like there was yeah. no other way to justify his yeah. presence in this movie. If he's wearing blouses, a, he's psycho. He's yeah. psychotic. And what I wanted so much, and I said it to Jason before, 
I want him to kiss Dom. Yeah. And they, like, let's race. And then he pulls him in. And then they kiss for like 30 seconds. And it's like, <laughs> and we Absolutely. just hold. And, and like at first, Vin Diesel's like not into it. And then he's like, all right, I'm into it. Because- or wouldn't it be great if during like a brutal fight, Momoa just leans in and smooches him? Yeah. I know that when I I can tell sometimes in my notes, I'm just going through them. I can tell tell sometimes in my notes how stoned I was when I watched the movie because of the jokes that I write. One of which is in the Rome scene when Momoa shows up, I wrote down, "Uh uh-oh, Momoa. (laughs) Nope. Well, by the way. Not great. By the way. But I thought, so funny. I got to write that in my notes. By the way, I mean, that should have been in the movie because they also take a 25-second detour to make uh, Han get high on, like, a, yeah. a pop brownie. Yeah. And it's like... And then it, it doesn't pay, pay off, off at, at all. all. <laughs> There's no I, reason for it. You're like, Why? oh, he's going to be so now. And you're like, oh, no, he's I not. Want Pete that. Davidson was in this movie. Uh, yeah. I, <laughs> uh, I would like to argue that point. All right. Was he in this movie? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, first of all, this is the guy who's in control of the London Underground? No offense to Pete Davidson, but I don't think that, like... We, He's they, not British. Yes! <laughs> Put Michaela Cole in there. Put Richard Iowate in there. Like, give me somebody who's British. Don't put it... Why is he in control of the London Underground? Or give us a reason why he is. Yeah. Or build something yeah. out. There is... There, to have neither... Yeah, is, or put one of us in there. Yes! yes. Yeah. Put June yeah. in. June during the British doing, accent. Doing yeah. a British accent. <laughs> and that's where they kick off the storyline, where it's all about just how Tyrese is spending more of his personal money... <laughs> oh. <laughs> That he would like I to be I wanted spending. so much more. Or, than also, I like it. his best of money, if every one of those bills was a ten thousand dollar bill, he still couldn't afford the shit. It's not, buying. No, yeah, it's like it's like you're buying tanks. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and no, by the he's way, he's got max, like max, he's got fifteen thousand dollars. It was played as though it's like a fanny pack. We all have them. Everyone's got a vest filled with money that they have sometimes. Just, one of their buddies, at least. Well, but he also like what's so crazy about that scene is. Roman is revealed to be the largest idiot of all time because they are trying to buy tanks. He's like, here's a hundred bucks. Like, wait a second. You've been in all these movies. You understand that that's not even gas. Like, like he's, he's also like, I think the third best driver in their logic. Yeah, right. Like, yeah. He's a real car guy. And they don't like the fact that he, I mean, I get it's a joke, but it's also at a level of like stupidity that is really <laughs> At a yeah. certain point, concerning. Like, I, <laughs> I'm i concerned about the well-being and welfare of these well, people they, have been hit in the, the head. In the they have a lot of trauma. In the beginning, they have to set it up where Dom's like, to huh? And he's like, eh, Roman wanted to do this mission, so I couldn't tell him no. But so, I the whole, that's like that. so you so know he's bad. an idiot, so I need you to do it. I need to make sure you go on this trip because I can't leave him in charge of it. And I'm like, what is... What? And then they are constantly selling Tyrese out over and over again, so much so that he and Ludacris have to get into like a slap fight with each other. Which that is was also not good. Not good. <laughs> it's also not like the mission is like throw a brunch. Like it is life or death. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, what yeah. is the mission? The uh, mission. It's, uh, <laughs> there is no mission. Some cars and they're uh, supposed to steal a. P- they think a computer chip or something, but it turns out to be the Gilligan's Island bomb. Oh, but they need God's eye for something. What are they trying to do in the second half of the movie? Just get I... back to the rest of the group. Oh, they're all trying to get back who, to that. It they're... depends on who you're talking about. This is an interesting movie because this movie allows. For Dom. We're still in the first act. When oh, yeah. the movie, the movie ends, ends on the all, first we act. We all screamed like, what? Like, I have never been... like." No, the, it would be the, like if this show ended now. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, like, the, the, the finale of The Sopranos was less shocking of an ending than when this movie said well, that I, if, it's a, like, if it's a true three-part movie, the end of the movie is the end of the first act. So we have so Bang. much more. I go back to, to the, I, this is exactly like when Legolas goes down the river. And the <laughs> other guys are going to fucking Isengard or whatever. No difference. It is unfulfilling to end the movie where it ends because it's like okay, well, like wouldn't you like you even if you cut with the him just going down, 
Like, I know, cut out there. Here's the thing. I think it's very... I think it's very troubling to be like, oh, it's three movies. It's like, it's been 10 movies. It's yeah. been, you can't right. tell us that this is one of three. It's like, we're in number, we're in X, you know? <laughs> There's already been so many parts. <laughs> right. This should be the natural conclusion. It's not like, it's like, it's like a K turn of an ending. It's like, oh, well, we, to get in this spot, we got to real, we got to pull out, pull in. And I want to call this now. After the third yeah. one of these, this trilogy, it's going to end, and then there's going to be a mid credit sequence, and it's going to fucking start up all over <laughs> oh, again yeah. for God. fucking sure. You cut oh, yeah. back to little Bow Wow from two. <laughs> he never did race me. So Vin actually gets quieter in this movie and more stoic than he's ever been. What's interesting he actually too about- shows some vulnerability in this one. Which I agree. Is a little he weird. Yeah. I love Vin Diesel. <laughs> I do too. I actually think he's the thing that makes these like I like Hobbs and Shaw, but I think like his absence is what makes that movie feel like the, the thing is like as as many tones as there are in the movie, he works in every one because he takes them all so seriously. Yes, yes. like and he's you never that. winking at the camera. He's never in his head. You see, he's like these are the best fucking movies ever made. Yes. I have to take them as seriously I need as you, anything. I yeah. need you to understand that he, Vin Diesel, in this movie, Dom is alone on a solo Christ-like journey in the desert. He <laughs> saves the Vatican. He saves By the Vatican pinball. alone. Pinball he- with a giant nautical bomb that everyone is familiar with. Oh, it's that. Yeah. We got it. Yeah. Like, I know. Ludic- Ludacris knows every bomb on Earth and all their <laughs> Oh, my God. He oh, yeah. identifies it immediately. This is so this interesting, is what I, I, though, that the threat of the bomb is not that it's going to be detonated. Nope. <laughs> it's just that the size of it rolling around is going to hurt people. And, and it's a, it is it literally is I feel like it's inspired by a pinball game. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. And, and I, mean, I thought Diesel it worked also he goes downstairs on the side in that car. That car still has no problem with traction. Jumps he uses up. the car to shield the restaurant people from the fire? Oh, well that's the other thing. <laughs> the, the, so many people get killed in this movie. No. Like, I know, but they don't show it, but they have to, right? No, the collateral say, damage. There was no fatalities. No fatalities. <laughs> no fatalities. That's Bullshit. impossible. When that, when that bomb goes off, it shoots cars forward by 100 feet. You, there's somebody walking around the Vatican no, that day. If you, like, people would have died just naturally in that area. This, this is what how I know you're not, yeah. you're, you are not men of faith. Because <laughs> if you were, you would understand. It would have been yeah. great if they said, 150 people died, but then mysteriously resurrected. Resurrected, yeah. <laughs> I have a question I'm dying to ask. Uh, there are 12 main characters up until this film. Then they introduce five more main characters. Sure. Do we think they're going to add five more in every subsequent <laughs> film? Well, there's more characters to bring back, right? Because, like, I mean, if we go back to... Let's, if we let's go back look to, at the charts. This is our simple cast for Fast 10. It's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16... 18, 20, 22, 25, 20, 27 characters with then 28, 20, 29 characters wow. that pop up. Not in, enough. Right. And by the way, one of them, one of them is uh, Paul Walker's daughter. Yes. Um, she is the flight attendant. She's the flight attendant. But she was like a spy flight attendant. Yes, the spy flight yeah, attendant. Yeah, she's helping Uncle Jacob out. Uh, I also felt bad for Diago or Diago, uh, yeah, who, yeah, who, who really sticks up for Vin Diesel, protects him from getting killled, and then Vin Diesel has no hesitation. Well, because to let him he thinks die. he, he can, him. he thinks he's like, oh, I'm gonna win, and that's. Uh, oh, okay. That's so that's like being Judas. Like he okay, has a got cross. It. Jesus and must die for his choice. Okay, so that okay, so then that makes sense. That was very clear. So Hub- then- hubris. He's guilty wait, of so hubris. Wait, are John Cena and Jortana Brewster siblings? Yeah, I didn't realize that until yes. 20 minutes and ago. Yes. Rita More- and Rita Moreno is all of their mothers? Yes. Should we talk about Rita Moreno or just stay away wait, from it? I mean, the what? fact that they bring her into this. I mean, she doesn't even really... I Unless mean, this next one opens with her killing like 20 mothers. Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah. Here's what I think. I think they're setting up Rita Moreno to fight Queenie. Well, it's uh, so interesting, yeah. though, because the whole mo- all of these movies are based on like the patriarchy of the Toretto family and passing along like the legacy of what it is to be a man in this family. And so when she arrived, I was like, I didn't know they had a mom. I just have never... 
She's the grandmother. Grandma. She's the grandma. Oh. She's the grandma. So they do not Where have a mom. created <laughs> Toronto. <laughs> yes. So Until you were right, the Judy. next movie. <laughs> oh, so it is still about the men in the family. Yeah. Wait a second. I just well, realized she, that. Yeah. Moreno says to Dom, you honor his name when he's looking at pictures of his dead father, her dead son. Jack Toretto. <sighs> Jack. It's like, it's so like Jack is his name. Don't bother about my name. Yeah, you, you his right. name. But you where is his, his mom? Where? So Jack Toretto had... She's in all right, the next so Jack one. Toretto had the Mia mom? Toretto, Jacob Toretto, and Dom Toretto. His dad birthed him. And there's no... <laughs> Yeah, That's there's the thing. no Every moms. Toretto was squoze from he a was, penis. He was, he was <laughs> born in the back of a car. He was, he was, yeah. he was a born, squoze in, born in a muffler. He was born of out car. of a Nas container. His dad fucked a Nas container. And, then and the, the only way to instigate the birth is you have to yeah. go 120 miles an hour and yeah. hit the Nas. It looks like hell like when a snake eats a person, but in reverse. <laughs> 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 I think that Vin Diesel was born the same way that we saw the birth of that guy who was in Shaw's punching bag. Jim Brewer? I don't know. Uh, but <laughs> like, That was Jim Brewer. <laughs> like, I think that that's how everyone's born in here. It's like you, they get punched enough by Shaw, then they birth out of there. Who was that guy? Shaw feels like he should be fighting guys in shape. Like, that just feels like easy pickings. He was like, just punishing that's that That's from guy. another movie. That's from Hobbs and Shaw. What? That's really, yeah, there you but, go. Okay, but no, but that, from, that gag is from another movie where it introduces someone punching a punching bag and then I, they reveal I don't give a shit. That gag was great bag. and I loved it. It was oh, a good yeah. gag. I didn't like, well, I guess, again, there's some big comedy. Like, that guy's like, mm, uh, like he, <laughs> There was only like 20 people in our theater and that big killed. Oh, I, I can imagine. <laughs> And then maybe that's where, like, this director understands how to, like, kind of let that valve out. Because I was going to say, like, we see Vin so serious in the movies, but then look at him in an interview like this. Okay. Ten. Fast ten. Is this going to be the biggest and best one yet? It's going to be the biggest and best one yet. And, and in so many ways, it's going to be the biggest and best one yet. In some ways, it's just the fact that we're continuing. In some ways, the fact that we're continuing a saga... And we have incredible talent like Tyrese Gibson that live and breathe the role of Roman. And because of Roman, we decided to do our premiere in Rome. Get it? Rome, Roman. Rome, Roman. It's all because of Roman beers. We're going to go to Rome. I got an idea. I got an idea. Let's do the world premiere at Roman. Rome, Roman. See? See what happens when they get, get together? The decisions being made in rooms that I'm not in. Give me a hug, man. Aww. I love you, man. You I love you. I love you, man. They're brothers. I love you. I love you. That's all you need to know. You know, I'm we're, sorry we're, to interrupt you. Well, what we're is all part this? of the same miracle. <laughs> we're all we part shouldn't of the same be allowed miracle. to see Eddie's this. Right. We're all part of the same miracle. Shh. That. Yes. What's amazing? <laughs> what's amazing is that that gets at one of the things that's like. This movie is so, like, I love when this movie tries to do jokes. And one of them is the Roman play on Roman's name, which is, then they go, the only Roman you know is Roman Noodles. <laughs> that's, I like that joke. That's a huge joke that in was the a movie. Great, that was a good joke. I mean, I was actually, I was actually thinking, like, the opening of this movie also, because I saw the trailer for uh, uh, Oppenheimer uh, before this. Yeah, very so similar, yeah, very similar. Right, and I thought, like, with that bomb, that's kind of what was going on. It's like, he's like, I heard they're making Oppenheimer. We'll fucking do it in the first 20 minutes of our movie. And better, because it's like, there's a, the bomb looked exactly the same. Like, when they're launching it up in the trailer before the movie, like, it's the same bomb. I think same it's bomb. the Oppenheimer bomb. I want the Oppenheimer bomb. <laughs> Roll it through Rome. <laughs> All of the all of the flaming pinball Rome stuff ending in so Dom good. hitting a crane that comes around like a flipper Perfect. in pinball, and then he keeps driving. Yes, he keeps driving. He drives. He's. It is. It's so fun to watch someone just exist as an immortal on Earth, unfazed as long as he's in a car from beginning to end. In the end, he's like the only mistake you made was not taking away my car. <laughs> and that's it. That's it. As long as he's got a car, he can do It's anything. also, I believe, the first time we ever see him buckle up. That the first yeah. time seatbelts have True. ever been used. No, in the van. He's oh, like, yeah. in the van with Reacher, he's yes. like, oh, you should buckle up. Yeah, creature. By the way, Jack Reacher, 
He's great. He's great. He's great. And shot an alt scene there at the end. They're like, you know what? Why don't you just be in cahoots with Jason Momoa? He's like, yeah. And they did it. And that was it. That like, he didn't no know. Sense. Yeah. Like, he didn't know it. He wasn't playing it that yeah. way. That was not in the script. They're like, yeah, yeah, you're, you're, you guys are in cahoots. Now, can I ask a question? What is the agency? Uh, great great question. question. Is it tax funded? What are they I trying think, to I, do? I, I think it's like S.H.I.E.L.D. in the Marvel movies. Yes. But they're not trying to do anything. Oh, aren't they? They're trying to do everything. <laughs> well, they also have like a, like, like he basically has like a John Wick system. He's like, who wants to, like, who wants to kill Tom Toretto? I was like, I do. I do. Oh. It's like, it's all like a who wants yeah. to be a millionaire game or some weird, like, it's everyone's like some silhouetted. It's sort of like um, Illuminati Kingsman style, like independent agency. Well, it feels like it used to be the CIA, and they were like, "This is too heady for people. We need to simplify this." And it shit. also feels like they answer to the no was- government. They yeah. answer to a shadow government. Yeah. 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 The that's audience a, is that's on board. for the agency. Yes. Yeah. You know what? That is very agency. This very is a movie. Agency this is a movie where the entire time you are believing. This makes sense. Jason Momoa is after Vin Diesel because Vin Diesel did something bad until at the end you realize, oh, no, no, The Rock killed his dad. Like, again, like they don't want you to think that well, hard. He put like, the bullet in him, but did he really kill him? <laughs> I mean, the way that they show, the, first of all, that was a surprise to me, and I, wa- I leapt for joy that The Rock is back. Oh, I yeah. legitimately... I love The Rock. I 100% thought it was going to be a CG construct of Paul Walker. I, I, I me too. too. Oh, me too. Well. oh, they're saving it. Paul oh, it's Walker gonna will be happen. in these movies. They're waiting I mean, for the, the technology movie, to get there. The That's movie three. is already basically written by AI. Yeah, the, yeah. Literally, so, Mid Journey was only designed to create Paul Walker CG. Holy <laughs> shit. He, he will be in these films. Another cameo I lightly thought was going to happen is when the two semi trucks pulled up at the end. I half thought one of them was going to turn into Optimus Prime. Uh, I like legitimately thought that. one of them was just going to walk, walk, walk. The technology, humans, like, the surgery machine. We must. Uh, we are family. We you have us to. Autobots. Dumb. The technology dumb. level is dumb. Movie. We have to find the all spark. <laughs> The all I spark in the God's eye. When they get together, we will Mega, rule the world. Where, where, where the Reyes is, family are aligned against us. Where is Sam Wick Wicky? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, he's not here? We can't, oh, we can't have him here? And okay. Bumble, and then John Cena plays his character great. in Bumblebee. Yeah. And actually, that's how he yeah. comes back. I'm actually the guy from Bumblebee. The end of the movie should be like Pee-wee's Adventure, and they just run into every other movie and just collect all I'll the say, stars. I know Louis Leterrier is coming back to make these yeah. movies, but is the, you know, yeah. The way to really dial in the next two movies is to put Michael Bay in charge of See, I, this I, franchise. I had a very different opinion, which is there's these two fucking guys named Seth and Evan who Done. I think oh. could crush a couple fast. Absolutely, I would love do to. it. We this, want to. I dare you. This movie we cost. We don't give a shit about our careers. We're in. This movie cost four hundred million dollars not enough not enough wait four hundred million dollars that, that is too much money for <laughs> and the and the digital fire there's 30 looks main like cast dog members. shit yeah the digital fire the is terrible in general are not i mean good. honestly like truly if you have 30 main characters who've been in this franchise for a decade you got to pay them a, i mean at that point too it's like just in the slightest of raises they're all probably making so much money but yeah, I, I do think it's on the screen. You, just, you blew my. Fu- I thought it was like two hundred and fifty. The million Rock million. You got a million bucks just for the close-up of him grabbing a phone and hey, breaking it. He, he, he actually deserves that. I wow. love it. They should have just done that four hundred times. <laughs> wow! That line, did you write down that last line? Because it was a great line. It was like you, you some bitch, bitch. Uh. and then he crushed the phone. <laughs> I love The Rock. I love the length. I was so glad Black Adam tanked because oh. I was like, good. Yeah. We get The Rock back in Fast and Furious. <laughs> so and, you're right. And I, think yeah. now, and I think now he feels safe because he's like, oh, I can be in a whole different movie. I'll never interact with 90% of the cast. Like, he can be in a solo movie. Like, mo- most of these people do not was, share screen that time. That was a genuine bummer for me was how little they were together. Yeah. Like, well, I, do you think any of it is like, I hate her, she hates yes. me, I hate him, and I'm going to hear that motherfucker? So I know this. I know that, or this is what the internet tells me. Um, 
So you know this. I know it for true. Uh, Dom and obviously uh, The Rock, they don't like each other. So Vin and The Rock don't like each other. But then I heard that because of the shooting of Hobbs and Shaw, The Rock and uh, Statham don't like each other. So they really? now need to be nice. separated. So, which is a bummer. I don't want to believe that to be true, but someone said that they also need to be separated. Uh, Dom, Dom seems to only be able to be in scenes with Michelle Rodriguez. Yes. And I'd love yeah. to talk about how the only, um, the, 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 their, sexy their sexual was chemistry <laughs> is predicated on his ability to lift her up yeah. and then fetishize whether she's pregnant yet. <laughs> Their sex scene is like, I lift you up, I put you down, and then I listen at your belly, and I say, yeah. is he in there yet? <laughs> did I put a baby, if, if did you're I put not a baby in there? Says, when she if, says no, he's like, I'm not interested then. If, if you're not he gonna only get, wants to fuck her if she's pregnant. If you're well, not going to give birth to my kid, I'll give birth man. to my own kid. <laughs> Like my dad did to me. Like my dad squoze me out his pee hole. I, I will say that when Charlize shows up to his house, and I don't know why Charlize... That was the electric car, I think, the DeLorean oh, that Charlize okay. was in. Because that so, was like a fucking DeLorean? That was cool. awesome. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, when, that, that was the one legit thing that was just awesome. I yeah, love that. that. Cool. And, and she put blood all over his mailbox, which is a pain, you know, to clean that off. Um, <laughs> but um, when, when she goes there, like Vin Diesel's like, God damn it! And he hits the wall, and the ha entire house shakes. <laughs> like now, that I to really me also is. To like, see, I really wanted to see the Charlie, Charlize and Michelle Rodriguez like, adventures together. Well, that's what we're getting. We're going to. Is we're that getting two? Them and Giselle in a tank. Yes, yeah. yeah. we are getting that. A sub, Fantastic. a nuclear oh, yeah, sub. A submarine. That's I mean, right. again, and just to remind you, Giselle died in a tank, horrific yeah. plane explosion. <laughs> like there and, was no and way. She looks great. Yeah. And Not I love, too, they blew up the last nuclear sub. But since then, Charlize has managed to get her hands on a second Another summary. nuclear sub. I did not realize that that oh, was yeah. a new sub. Of yeah, it's a different there is sub. No, also, there's no bad movie with, like, a future prison. You could make like, a whole movie about Charlize getting that sub. <laughs> They I also fucking like might that, be doing that. I hope so. Charlize also has a computer system where it's like, Take this one thing out. Got it. That's the hard oh, time. Like, my like other all question, the she hacked, when she made gas, like in a movie full of the silliest shit ever, again, in our theater, which had 20 people in it, when the gas came out and she's like, I made the gas go into the other room, you could feel these 20 people be like, this is fucking stupid. Wait, <laughs> I want to say, like, for people who haven't seen the movie, she is in shackles in a face-off style room with Michelle Rodriguez. Boy, did I want them to face off. I was, oh, like, I was like, please, your faces, yeah. please, this is, by the way, the introduction into the fast world of science. <laughs> this is the first Lasers. time we've been in a laboratory yeah. where science happens. How about the, 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 there was that like contraption with five lasers? The surgery yes. laser. And it powered up and then it started and you were like, oh, there's going to be a big action sequence. And then it just went away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Charlize and Michelle Rodriguez are, 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 are stuck in, you know, um, beds, you know, uh, with their legs and arms bound. And because Charlize this... is able to tip, tap, tip, tap on the screen yeah. on the bed she's trapped on and that she's somehow able to do a series of things that are Hack she disables the, the alarms she undoes her cuffs. and why would they even have ventilation where that pipe would even work the opposite direction <laughs> like why would you even set that but she does it so it is oh yeah also, they should have left and then oh yeah right yeah. also that fight is great. Oh, oh it's I amazing. It. Again, I want to say, her against the yes, wall is fucking great. The Charlize fights, both of them, are absolutely the most interesting and compelling action sequences in this movie. And they are, to Louis Leterrier's point, more grounded yeah. than anything in the last five movies, I feel like. And they are objectively pointless to the plot, yes. story, <laughs> and progression of events in it's, the film. It yeah. is, every, this movie is Rosencrantz and Gildersteen are dead. It's like, Hey, look, we know that the main, you got the main plot. Let's just show you kind of this, like, this guy's getting a sandwich. Here's These people are in a helicopter. On, yeah. <laughs> Jack Reacher's on an airplane. Like, we don't care. Like, uh, it doesn't feed into the main story. It's just for you to see. Paul, Paul, yes. can I just say one quick yeah. story before you go to the oh, audience? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. I showed my son, who is six years old, the trailer, and he just went, this makes me feel really strange. <laughs> <laughs> that's he gets my, it. That's my story. He gets it. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right. Let's it hit him. him. We got go to the audience. Everyone's in these amazing costumes. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to err on the side of picking somebody with a great costume first. All right, Tuna Sandwich is getting up. Tuna nice. Sandwich and Wedding and Wedding Vin. Yeah. We got a fish hand and a, and, uh, and a sandwich head. Okay, so uh, your name and your question. I'm Alan. Uh, my big question is there's two big mysteries of the series. There's the lineage, um, Dominic Toretto's parents, especially the mom. Also, who the hell are the faceless shadow people running the agency? I'm, yeah, starting to, I'm starting to think that maybe they're connected, especially since we don't know where his mom is. Like, right. do you think that they would be revealed to be the people in charge of the agency? Wow. Ooh, good that question. That would be cool. I love that. All right, I like that question. You see, I had a theory. I pulled the clip, but I won't play it right now. That at the end of Hobbs and Shaw, there's a voice. All right. Oh, yeah. And, and that this voice is like, oh, who is that? Like, this is like, a, uh, who has been behind this the entire time? And I'm afraid they're going to retcon it and make it Jason Momoa. Oh, yeah. But I feel like they'll bring it in because it originally was supposed to be Keanu Reeves. Yeah, it was just. Do we know who he was meant to play? Or? Yes, the bad guy, and then they went back to him to be the bad guy for this, and then he couldn't do it. So Jason Momoa. So I still believe there's a better chance we get. I love that. I mean, it would be great to get Keanu in oh, this because I mean, then we get great fights. I was gonna say, then you really can dial in great fight sequences, oh, not just big car set pieces. You get good hand-to-hand stuff. Go ahead. You this gentleman are, right they're, here... They're, they're not putting nearly that much thought into these things, just so you guys... That is probably true. Go they're ahead. like, ah, oh, we don't care. Uh, this guy actually revealed the Keanu uh, fact to us. It was confirmed to me this week and confirmed online as well. All right, your name and your question. Uh, my name is Rich. And you are in a... Um, I am the runway from Fast 6. Whoa! Whoa. He has a... Whoa. Wow! Whoa. Amazing. So I would have said Giselle's corpse is somewhere on you, but it's this not. This is wow. amazing. A full explosion. We have the cars racing. Great, great costume. Full yeah. runway. It goes on forever. It's 15 uh, more feet. It's 15 <laughs> feet of runway. This is like, like what miles. you would wear to the Met Gala. Look at it go down. Look at this. Look, it goes down. It does. It's 15 feet because the, the runway was supposed to be 28.5 Is anybody miles. here dressed like Giselle who would like to lie down on this runway? Real question. Any Giselles. Any Giselles. Any Giselles? Any Giselles. You know what? I'd like to see a few more Giselles next time. I'll pick it up for the next show. Do any of you, can you think of another actor who had as much fun in their role as Momoa did, uh, like since Tom Cruise in Tropic Thunder? Or how yeah, about... Yeah, John Cena. Yeah. I don't, know if, I don't know if that's a good thing. Like, I felt like I said... I don't, want, I don't want to eat a meal and be like, this chef had a lot of fun making this thing. <laughs> Yeah, he, went, it's he like, went crazy in there. That's, that's what yeah, desserts for. Like, what about us, the <laughs> audience, having <laughs> he fun? He threw everything in this plate. He, I, really, he just went for it. I said to uh, one of our producers, Molly, I said, that's Captain Jack Momoa. That kind of is the vibe yes. that we're getting. It's a big swing that I think works. And I feel like people like that. I, I think will it, say, I was really after... So John Cena was the big bad of the last movie, yeah. and I did not enjoy... That as much. I enjoyed Cena in this movie so much more than I enjoyed him as the villain. Uh, well, in the we past. need you need a yin and yang. When the villains are too serious, it's not. Which is fun. why I loved Momo. I loved Momoa simply because it at least was something, something just different. You yes. know, a different flavor. And I was like, great, give me yeah. all of this. It was a different texture. Again, I wrote uh oh a Momoa. So <laughs> I, I, I want I'm on board. I wanted a third Shaw. Yeah, I more Shaw. Another Shaw sibling. Ooh. To quote Evan's son, it made me feel strange. <laughs> Wait, you mean, don't you mean, isn't it a fourth Shaw sibling? Isn't Vanessa Kirby oh, yeah, the Vanessa third Kirby's Shaw sibling? Oh, yeah, Vanessa Kirby's a Shaw sibling, yeah. When Where Shaw comes in, that was like, so by the way. Oh, like, give me a movie that's just the Shaws of London. <laughs> I love and that. And it's just a break. Or, and or like, a let reality Guy Ritchie show. direct it. Let Guy... Wait, wait, sorry, Paul. What did you say? No, I said just a reality show oh, of yes. them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but the, the Guy Ritchie directing The Shaws of London, I'm in. That's a great spinoff. But I will also say we didn't get enough of him. And I guess the whole series, or for a long time, has been building to... What's going to happen when Han and Shaw get together? How can we like Shaw? Because he killed Han. And I didn't feel like they really paid that one off too no. well. 
It's like he saves. He's like, we're especially because the last film ended with like the two of them face to face. Yeah, and you were like, oh shit, and then it's just like three minutes, not even a minute and a half of fighting, and then it's like we're cool. Yeah, we're good. And, he's and like, it Yo, wasn't you even made the- me lose my snacks. Yeah. <laughs> That's was he hot, still, still hot? Hot? I love snacks. Was he still? I, well, I would say this. All of them. No, no. joke is they like no, snacks. No, no. It's, it's Roman <laughs> is always hungry and never satisfied, and Han eats small things in little. Yes, yeah. Han's like Brad Pitt. He's like, and whenever I'm doing it, it's little business with food. I will say that I felt like when Han gets into a fight with Shaw, he drops a bag of little Cheetos, and I was like, ooh. I didn't like that he's like carrying around a bag of little Cheetos. Like what anything you, else. What do you want him to have? Anything but a bag of little Cheetos. Like, that's like what you put in the kids' lunchbox. Like, like I don't like, I'm like, give me like, he this could have, he could have like Good and Plenties. He could have Mike and Ike's. He could but have I like, feel like this nobody movie. likes Good and Plenties but you, Paul. Yeah. Also, Not a single other oh, person. By the way, your, your references. You could have some circus peanuts. Your references in there. were Good and Plenties. Good and Plenties. Mike and Ike's. He could Disgusting. have, he Ooh, could have some Werther Originals. <laughs> He could They're have those like little licorice, white, black chewy licorice. candies. Disgusting. He could have had a can of Moxie. <laughs> and could a, have got a, some Necco wafers. A, a bitter root. Like wafers. Uh, a pack of Big League an, Chew. An, an artichoke with some aioli. <laughs> Deviled eggs in a Ziploc. So, June, you don't like a candy-covered black uh, licorice uh, candy? Ugh. Disgusting. Gross. I, I like them, Paul. All right, thank you. Um, hi. Who are you dressed as? I'm Letty Inspired. Letty Inspired. I like that. That you can come, Letty Inspired. Right. What's your question? Given everything that we have seen Dominic Toretto survive out of mostly nine films, and he has survived a lot, do you feel like John Cena's sacrifice was kind of unnecessary? I feel like he kind of uh, he could have survived. Four billion percent. Only, yes. <laughs> only I, if you believe he's dead. I have, a, I have a theory. I have a theory on this. I think that The Rock wouldn't come back until John Cena died. Whoa! Because, He's like, there's only room for one of us in yes. these things. And yeah. it was only like one John Cena was brought in to replace The Rock, and he's like, "You kill off that motherfucker, then I'll come back in." Like, and I feel like they had to get him in by saying, "And he's dead." Wow. But how can anyone trust that anyone's dead? No one dies in these movies. No, I mean, I don't know how you could look. Unless you have see a, their head split open with their brains on the ground, yeah, they will They're still not live. By the way, dead. not they only does still, no one die in these movies, you can die in real life and still be yes. in these movies. And if you die in real life, you are thriving in the movie. Um, yes, uh, your name. You're dressed as Dom. You look great as Dom. You got no sleeves. Your question. Uh, yes, uh, it's Pete, and uh, one. I, I hope the shirt is Oh Oh Momoa with like the guy's face with all taped up. Oh Oh Momoa is a good shirt. But what I was so frustrated was is that staying on the topic of all like they come back from you know assumed dead is at the end of the movie when the plane of everybody and they crash in the side of the mountain, but you don't see anything. It's like, you might as well just say, yeah, they parachuted out. It's like, it was so upsetting that like, they'd even just show the plane actually crash into the mountain, put another, what, $10 million on the film at the... No, well, they have to, like, they had to make it dramatic, but they didn't make it that dramatic because, yeah, Yeah. they would have killed the entire franchise. That plane carried majority of the cast, yeah. It'd be so, it'd be so funny if they died. Like... (laughs) And the next, and, the next movie's like they blew up. And, and to Evan's point, They're they'll have another now. twenty people ready to go. It's like, and here's the other twenty people we didn't bring back, so it's fine. God, um, what I would give that was their death. What I would give to see just like a travel day for the team. What I would give to see them their packing itin- them getting their itineraries. Yes. Yeah. Do they have clear? Do yeah. they have TSA pre? Okay. It's He's also like they have quicker. to. They, they have gotta to get bring the, cars everywhere. Cars have to get on planes. Planes are as much of their deal as cars, because cars need planes. And they need <laughs> big planes. And that means it's airfields, so they're getting airfields. Air fields. Pilots, and, pilots are a part of it. Clearance. And, so, and they don't seem that they were rushing to get to Rome, so they're probably casually leaving. Eight o'clock LA to Rome to get there for the next morning. They literally that was like a 10 a.m. mission. And I'm gonna say jet lag. they never seem jet lagged. They seem well rested. <laughs> they take a day. <laughs> if um, the mission if, starts Friday, we gotta get there Wednesday. Because we gotta take, take a, day. a day. Yeah. You have a great costume here. You're dressed as Nas. Amazing. It looks uh, absolutely Nas itself. Oh, they're Nas, uh, what are they called? They're molecules, Nas molecules. Nas, Nas molecules. Wow. What are Nas, Nas molecules? molecules. Like, um, 
oxygen and nitrogen and nitrogen. Oh, oh, like real molecules. I thought that was like a, on a can of Nas. Now I understand what you're saying. Okay, great. This really is our Met Gala, huh? Yes. This is the Met Gala we deserve. This is the Met Gala, but not revolving around a fucking Nazi racist. <laughs> 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 She is a chemistry teacher, so she made these molecules, especially for the show. Please, if you have a great costume, stick around. We want to get some pictures of you, too. Um, all right, uh, your question. Um, I have two. Okay, you can do it. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, do you feel like they push the envelope with the racial no. ambiguity of Vin Diesel and his child? Yes. Also, well, you can, was, you can, was the, can we say the name of the production company that was the first title card? One uh, Race. One Race Productions. <laughs> we went from Race Wars, which we know to is a Vin <laughs> Diesel thing. He wanted it to be Race Wars to One we Race. started with Race Wars, wound up with One Race. And, there was a winner, and his <laughs> and his first short film was multifacial about how, as someone corrected me, he had a hard time being cast because people are like, we don't know what race you are. And Listen, okay, <laughs> I get it, <laughs> but also Mark Sinclair. Okay, let's be cool about this. That's Vin Diesel's name. Yes. Mark Sinclair. Yes. In real life? Yes. In real life. Mark Sinclair? Vin Diesel's name. Yes. And and it's it's always been that. Vin Diesel's name is yes. Mark Sinclair. Yes. Yes. This is, is not his, in is the podcast. Is his middle name Diesel? <laughs> you, is it Mark Vin. Vincent Sinclair? <laughs> I've been sitting on that so long. <laughs> Okay, what's your second question? Oh what a bombshell. Uh, so this is something that I've really been pondering. So they, they pop out of Antarctica, and then they walk a small amount, and then a submarine busts out of the ice, but Antarctica is a land mass. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Prove or it! so Prove you it. think. Who's actually been there? No one. No, Antarctica is an agency base that masquerades as a landmass so that people don't know what's going on. We got another Dom Tread over here. Okay, your name and your question. My name is Storm. Uh, my question is, do you guys think that we're going to get... I'm uh, sorry. <laughs> I'm not going to let you get to your question, Storm. <laughs> he already uh, he has his license out to, to show. prove that... It's the a proven... Proven. Storm. Storm. My, my name is Mason Storm Bird, and unfortunately, I'm actually named after a Steven Seagal character. What? No! You're named after a Steven Seagal? From Which one? Call your a parents right now. Hard to kill. Get your parents hard on the phone. Hard to kill. It's the guy at Hard His to Kill. His name is Mason Storm. Mason, he, wow. was in a, he was in a coma for 17 years and woke up trying to, k to, k to kill the Rastafarians who put him there. And, and Kelly LeBrock like, looks at his dick when he's in the coma, like, wow, he's got a big dick. Like, she, oh, yeah. yeah. What are you talking That's about? That's in the movie. No, I know. I'm asking. Your parents yeah. saw that parents... and were like, we have to name our son after were this. Were you conceived during that movie? <laughs> My, I was born like right around the time that movie came out. Uh, so that's born, so dope. Also, at the same time, Desert Storm was going on. So my, my parents didn't want to name me Storm. Oh, wow. So Desert Storm and Steven Seagal. Oh, wow. so you're named after both the war and Steven Se That's cool. Yeah. yeah. You are your... blowing my mind. <laughs> your name is preposterous. <laughs> But deadly, but deadly. very deadly. And fucking cool. And, and patriotic. So cool. Uh, wow. So do you guys think maybe in the next movie we're going to get an answer, this tags along with the previous question, to uh, maybe who, who Little B's father actually is? There was a huge gap from Elena and Vin being together, Elena and Dom. All of a sudden, boom, she has a child, and this child looks nothing like either one of them. Are we going to maybe find out who his real dad is? His real no, dad is Vin Diesel, she, Mark Sinclair. <laughs> I, I do believe... Little I B. do believe that he loves 
racial ambiguity across the board. Like I feel like he, oh, like, yeah. like That's he his wants, shit. yeah, oh, yeah. Mark wants Sinclair. It. It's like uh, I remember reading about the the Black Eyed Peas, and like we could travel the world because anywhere we go, we could put a different person as our front man because that's <laughs> the way. Yeah, I, that was. It's, so we got the Fergie version. Yeah, <laughs> that's you who know, we identify with. You know, taboo. You know, taboo plays big in different areas. Of what area? You know see? so much about the Black Eyed Peas. Why do you so know like, so there's much? There's countries where that other dude whose name I don't know that's not Will I Am or Fergie. Taboo, is. that's it. Taboo, Taboo yeah. is the most famous black eyed pea yeah. in other countries. You go to France, Taboo is like, ladies and gentlemen, Taboo in the black eyed peas. <laughs> Bonjour! Noir! <laughs> Je m'appelle Taboo! <laughs> Oh my gosh! Um, so we have been doing a very long show, but you know what? We want to oh, keep. Oh, let's it. keep it going, though. Lisa's got a birthday, but more importantly, we want to do something special. You see, uh, every time we talk about a movie, we want to give a chance for a second opinion. We want to do something a little bit different. And you know, oftentimes we say to you, the audience, like, "Hey, uh, does somebody have a second opinion song?" But tonight we have a special guest. That guest is John Lejoie, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Hello, everyone. John, welcome. You Did you see Fast T I know that you love these movies as much as we love these movies. I've only seen Hobbs and Shaw. <laughs> <laughs> Saw it on a plane, loved it. <laughs> see, I'm into it. I'm into Hobbs I've and Shaw, I've honestly too. listened to every episode that you've done about the Fast movies, so I feel like I get it. Yeah, and by the way, that, you know, we are the companion piece to it. But John, this is awesome. So you often hear John singing the song on the show, here tonight for the first ever live performance yes. of... Thank you. The second thing, John. You brought, you brought a guest. Yes, this is my friend, John Titterington. He's going to help me out. Audience, I'm going to need your help as well. Yes, give it up for John. Um, I was going to do my normal Second Opinions theme song. However, uh, since I've listened to the podcast about these movies, not seeing the movies, um, I know that these movies are not pieces of shit. And so I had to tweak it just a little bit. Um, also, there's a Kumite chant going in my Second Opinions theme song. <laughs> However, this is Fast and the Furious, so if you will help me out, I'd love to get a family chant going. So, family, 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 seven, fate, nine, X, the movie was fantastic. That's why these people recommend it. Tell me what is the message? Maybe some art is objectively good. I need a second opinion. for John. John Lajoie, John Titterington. Thank you, guys. Well, uh, obviously, uh, people love this movie. It's hard to find reviews on Amazon, so I had to go to uh, our friends over at Letterbox to get some, and I love Letterbox. Uh, it's my favorite uh, social media site. And um, here's what we got here. Uh, all right, so from Letterbox, this is written by uh, Alex Duvrage, and he writes it in French. Un résumé, pew pew, vroom vroom, bang bang. Aussie Jason Momoa version, J du tempo sur la crack. So, I don't know, but that's five stars. Um, uh, this one is R, just says, um, okay, but if Jason Statham aggressively pulled me into his house and locked the door, I'd hear him out. Five stars. Uh, we went to Rotten Tomatoes as well, and uh, from Fast X, that's the user, they wrote, was a pretty good movie, the sound could be a little lower. Five stars. It was too loud for <laughs> Fast too, X. Yeah. Uh, Kenneth Pullum um, gave it a one-star review, and he wrote this. Hated the ending. Cliffhangers are great for TV but not for movies when you have to wait two years to see what happens. Lord of the Rings was one of the few exceptions. And even they wrapped up every installment so you left the theater with anticipation rather than frustration. Plus, 
That franchise was one movie broken into multiple parts in theaters only one year after the last one. Disappointed with whoever made this decision. We will not refer to this movie. We'll wait for the next installment, and then I'll update you on this one. <laughs> it's true. I have to say, like, from, like, a structural standpoint. Yes. This is the craziest movie ever made. Yeah, there, like, yeah right? Because it's like, what is the plot of it? Like, if we, if we really pared it down... And generally, like, truthfully, like, when you're writing a movie, you're like, if this scene doesn't need to be in there, like, if you can cut it, you yeah. do. Well, like, if that were the case, this movie wouldn't exist. Exactly. <laughs> like, that, that's this would be a non-movie. It's nothing Because happens. none of it is necessary. I will say that the, I will say one of the things that I really appreciated about the movie was tethering the stakes of the movie to inarguably the greatest action set piece of the series, which is the Brazil vault heist. Right. Yeah. So I think tying... Like they knew. So the like, best part of the movie is when they reused footage from yes. all the movie. other movies. They, yeah. I was like, the first 20 so minutes smart. is just the fifth movie. Yes, from other it's, angles. It's yeah. so <laughs> smart to be like, oh, let's give a different vantage point on our favorite series of events and that's going to start us off great and then from then on it's like... I also, do, I do wonder if they were like, we're, we're at 400 million. They legit won't let us go over. We have Can to we figure use out any money old footage? saving. We got to figure something out here, Use guys. the fifth one. It is the eighth most expensive film ever made. See, that's crazy. And if you adjust <sighs> movies for inflation, it would be Star Wars, The Force Awakens, Jurassic World, Star Wars, Rise of Skywalker, Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides, Avengers Age of Ultron, uh, Avatar The Way of Water, and Fast X. Like, By the way, those are all movies that take place like on other planets, yes. <laughs> like with other creatures, what, with other yes. worlds, with other like that realities. This, 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 is about the cast. Movie. this one's about a Plymouth. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like it, it, it's about a car yes, from yes. 1970. Like Dom, it, Dom seems to have a never-ending. Like, uh, uh, access to a never-ending amount of exactly his car. It gets destroyed in every city he's in. His car gets destroyed. And in the next moment, hours later, he's jumping out of a plane in another exact same he's, car. He's fixing it on those long plane rides. Um, all right, so this has 70% more so budget crazy. than Fast 9. 70%. And $100 million just went to cast. Oh yeah, a hundred million just to cast. So it's I, it, I see that. Yeah, so yeah. it's a and three hundred million. Dollar we will movie. all say, put us in these movies. We will work Please. for scale. <laughs> we are cheap. <laughs> now I will say this: uh, we talked a little bit about that scene where Momoa, uh, Oma. What did you say, Jason? It was Oma Moa. Oma uh, Oma Momoa. Uh, Oma Moa. When <laughs> when he still is, works. That's the T-shirt. Yeah. When, well, that's what he said, with the face of the dead security guard. So that dead security guard scene. One of the security guard faces, you're like, that one's okay. At the other one, you're the like, no. that's too much. It was upsetting. Like, it's <laughs> really, when they, and especially when you cut to it for reaction shots. And it's like, because <laughs> the blood, the blood was coming in weird spots. It was like, oh. And it's all Horrible. taped up like Amy Sedaris. <laughs> yes. It's like an Amy Horrible. Sedaris character. So this is the interesting thing about that scene. And I thought, and again, this is all stuff. This Wait, is not, you're about to tell us the interesting thing about yes. that scene? Because it's already very interesting. Uh, well, so essentially... There's documented information yes. about Oh, it. I have a lot of information about this. So basically, this scene, everyone wanted to cut. I could see why! Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and, and the, the person who fought for it is the head of Universal, Donna Langley... She said, no, that scene must stay. And so the head of Universal gets it. Like, in a way, like, I, that's the weirdest choice. Because, like, she makes, she's the one who's like, no. I'm, that's her stand was, he's got to paint the toenails and get those faces like that. And I think she might have been right. I don't, I think that's it his is. Ha that's his Hannibal. We cut out our reactions to that's it. That's his I just Hannibal Lecter fact. turn. That's where he seems to be not just another villain in the Fast and Furious pantheon, but a true psychopath. That, but, but that's what's so funny about that scene is like, and if you took it out, he'd just be a goofy dude who dances yes, but I yeah. also think there's, I also think there's something to just like, there's so many of these movies. I mean, I can't remember any of them, but I do think I will remember that scene 
as a part of this movie. That I right. remember that. That's like a scene from like a Michael Haneke movie. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. like, it's truly one of like the most disturbing <laughs> scenes I've ever seen. And in Michael, guys, and Michael and Haneke have a family. directing Fast like, Twelve. We know enough about those guys. Like he, like all I mean, that, we know is they have a family. Right. That's what he does. He f- gets recon on children. Like that's another moment that it's worthwhile looking at. Like. The way that he betrays her. That was gets, cool, I thought. I thought it was awesome. He's like, I am, you know, like he says, like, he's like, I'm just like little Jared and little Mikey. And then all these security guys all answer their phone I like mid they all have their phones like yeah. on during yeah. missions. Like, like, oh, no, yeah, but like, I, I love, it's a great move because yeah. Charlize shows up. She's like, I met the devil tonight. And then the whole cold open is this scene where Momoa shows up and he's like, I wasn't talking to you. I was talking to this guy and that guy. And then all their phones go off and all of their loved ones have been taken off. That stage. was, I thought I liked I that. I thought that was great. great. Yeah. Yeah. But like I'm on a podcast and I don't have out. my phone on me. Those guys were yeah. like killing people and all their phones were just on. <laughs> <laughs> on, but also they were in the middle of a hostage stand. Well, and and that means like, they were on. Hold on, hold on. Oh, like, were they on vibrate or did he say pull out your phones? No, he, they just did it. Yeah, they yeah. all pulled out their phones and maybe they have a special Because you hear like kids. buzz, buzz, buzz. Everybody's phones start going yeah. off. Wait a minute. <laughs> I no, loved that in that the- scene when he when he's like oh and he's like has everybody's loved one all the mercenaries loved ones in a thing and then he kills that one guy licks the knife we yeah. we talked about it that it's so yucky. crazy and he's like he kills the only guy who didn't have a family he could leverage against him I loved that. In this movie, if you don't have a family, you deserve to die. Yes. You're worthless. <laughs> You're worthless. There's and only that, one fucking no thing that matters. Family. <laughs> And that really is, I mean, that's, that's, what we, that's our guiding light from the beginning to the end. No family, you deserve to die. We didn't talk about Cena and, the, and Little B uh, dropping out of an airplane in a, mic, in a micro jet. And he, Little B is like, yay! But like, in, a, in like a micro jet that he carried through yes. the airport, checked! Yeah. I, th- I, thought it, I thought it was a kayak. Yeah, exactly. And they like, and they, and when you, when he checked it, they yeah. hung it in the yes. belly of the plane. And they somehow have access to cargo doors in a commercial airliner? And by the way, no other luggage in that commercial nope. airliner either. I will say this. Obviously, we all recommend the movie, I would imagine. Oh, my God. Uh, you know, yeah. um, if you don't see this movie, you should fucking kill yourself. This yeah. is... <laughs> it's the kind... Ki- ki- that's the only way to no put it. no reason to go on. <laughs> this is it. It's the kind of movie where people can be in multiple life or death fist fights, car crashes, all the rest. They can walk through sewers full of, like, a city's absolute filth and look perfect. <laughs> They look perfect. Just, Every, like, no, just like all of us. Yeah. Just exactly. Just like all of us here today. Nothing ever, there's no consequences for anything in anyone. I mean, Rome is pretty much destroyed. Everywhere they go is pretty much destroyed. They go back to Fast Five and destroy that bridge again. Like, they are menaces. They are they are bad people. Like, I mean, they are. They are equally bad villains. Wherever they go. They are hurting people. They're creating multiple Jason Momoas. You could continue the franchise for decades because of all the children of people who are killed. There's My dad was at that yeah. Italian cafe. Ah! And that's the thing. And that's like the bummer is that, not the bummer, but what's great is Momoa is part of this crime family. But like the collateral damage of just civilians that die yeah. over the course of the events of all of these movies is in the thousands. All of those people have a real case against our heroes. Yeah. You no mean like a class action type A class situation? action lawsuit. I, I'm just picturing Fast 10, 000, 12 courtroom drama. <laughs> I, class action. I'm picturing that that is the end of the last one. It's like 10,000 people facing <laughs> yes. Vin Diesel yeah. in hand to hand combat. You've killed all of our families. So no! Oh, God! <laughs> and it goes to this it goes back to his other movie, Find Me Guilty, which is. Uh, Vin the Diesel. Frequency That's with- Sidney Lumet's last yes. film. Yeah. The greatest filmmaker of all time, oh. arguably. Oh, my god. He gosh. made 12 Angry Men and this. <laughs> the verdict and this. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Any final thoughts as we uh, go around? Uh, any final Oof. thoughts? Oof. I loved in the scene we were talking about where Momoa is with the corpses, incredible foley work of just the buzzing of flies around the corpses. Oh. Yeah. 
There's such there there is really this movie is flawed but like really great compared to the last few. This one really went for it, I feel like. Uh, there was a bunch of stuff. Go ahead. My my last thing is just and maybe this is an unpopular comment. I hope they reel it back a little moving forward. I'm a little disagree. Worried. I'm a little I would worried. go for I would say I would go full like RRR with it. Like I would yes. go like Yes! Like, I think it should go crazy. Like, Vin Diesel should be throwing cars at people. Like, <laughs> riding a like, dragon. Five minutes after Vin Diesel chastises Reacher for not listening to him say, buckle up because there's a, a drone attack coming. Which which he knows about. Which he knows about. Because he's on his Correct. team. Vin Diesel is distracted and doesn't hear a helicopter approach and shoot the, the when the sniper comes. Like, there is... Such crazy dissonance between yeah. what everybody wants and has. Go also, ahead. Also, this movie, I, I really, I was dropped into like the reverence the, the family has for law enforcement and also the hatred for cops, but also cops will flip and also cops are criminals and they're one of us and we hate them, but they are us and they are our family and we love them. <laughs> And John Cena has a bat cave. <laughs> John Cena has a. I remember Evan, oh Evan literally turned to me and said, John Cena has a bat cave. Like, that, like, I wrote that it. Is, I wrote it. John Cena, space. dot, 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 a bat cave? A full bat cave. Well, maybe, the, maybe even the bat cave. Yes. The bat cave. This is the bat cave. And this is the place where they're all going to meet. They're all trying to get to John Cena's bat cave. And meanwhile, Jason Momoa has a really sad bat cave. Yeah. He is a like sad a, cave. Yeah. <laughs> It's like it looks like it's all like it, it is all full of flies. And it's like, and then he calls. He's like, "You found my sad cave." <laughs> the, the funniest when we were in the theater, like the the, the people behind us, who I feel so bad for, <laughs> they enjoyed the film. They, they, were, they were on the same eventually, ride. but at first it was rocky. But uh, at the there's like the credits, and then the, they were like packing their shit up, and then the egg cre- the like rock the sequence with the rock started, and the lady behind me just went, "What now?" <laughs> That's the T-shirt. What, what now? now? By the way, she, that's she the was title. So bothered that's by it. the title of Fast Eleven. <laughs> what, now? what now? More of this? I loved the okay. moment that the, in when Dom, when when Lil B jumps into Dom's car, and Louis Leterrier does like a it like um, it, it ramps into like the the muscles of Dom's body turns into the elements of the car. Like the visuals, basically the visuals posit that Dom is the car and that the car is an outgrowth of yeah. Dom. Well, he, his, a car was his mother. <laughs> I think Rita Moreno fucked a car. <laughs> the car. Oh my gosh. All right, uh, let's wrap it up here. All right, thank you everybody for a very long show. Thank you so much. Good night. That brings us to the end of another live episode from Largo. If you want to see what our Fast X t-shirt is, head on over to tpublic.com slash stores slash HDTGM. And a big thank you to Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg. Seth Rogen's brand new show, Platonic, airs on Apple TV plus Seth and Evan partner, combine, and make some of the best movies and TV shows out there. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is coming to a theater near you very soon. Check out the amazing trailer. Plus, if you're not watching The Boys on Amazon, get to it. The show fucking rules. Plus, June, Jason and I will be on tour this August. Tickets go on sale next week. That's right, the first week of June. Head to hdtgm.com to find out more about tickets and movie information but we'll be in the northeast and we want to see you there and if you are a member of sag i'm just gonna say to you right now think about voting yes on the strike authorization it's not that we want to strike it's just that we want to give the people in power the chance to call a strike if our demands aren't met we are a giant union and we need to get the word out about this strike authorization vote we only have until june 5th so get on it, people. All right, we will see you next time for our last looks hosted by Jason Manzukis. But this show, what you're listening to right here, couldn't be done without a couple of things. First of all, you listening, but more importantly, I'm talking about the amazing producerial work of Scott Sani, 
Molly Reynolds, and our movie-picking producer, Avril Halley, our engineer, Alex Gonzalez, and our publisher, July Diaz. People, they make the trains run, and we love them. So, we will see you next week for Last Looks, and until then, bye for now.